You can start talking if you like. Is no, that kind of a sing. show? Oh, start singing? Just kidding. Be my guest. Please. <laughs> no, don't you start. Don't get, don't you get carried now, away. Now, this is the kind of young lady. i got to tell a little story on her. When, when our people call and pre-interview her, she thinks she's bad on talk shows, and she's delightful. You were doing lines like, I'm terrible, I'm, I'm just not interesting in it. Are you listening? <laughs> no, no, but he told me about it. The young man told me about oh. it. And you're, you're wonderful. I figured I was going to have to call David in to do the other half. <laughs> he's much better at this than I am. Just put an empty chair there, and I'll ask a question. You can answer for him. You know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't mind. I could ask you about a movie that you're a part of, your co-star, called Twilight Zone, because there's been so much... Mm -hmm. Printed about that, and the dreadful accident occurred yes. with uh, Vic Morrow and those those two uh, Oriental kids. Vietnamese. And I mean, is that gonna? What do you think that's gonna do overall to the outcome of that movie? That, that dreadful well, I don't thing know. Cloud. Be because um, I think Steven Spielberg is a magical name, oh. and uh, I know I'm a big fan. I mean, it's uh, it's just a bright talent that came on the horizon, and. Um, has kind of changed the uh, motion picture industry. Yeah. Uh, he has had a stiff or two along the way, though. Everybody forgets, you know. I'm not here to e mention those. I'm even though E.T. E to e to you is uh, <laughs> one of the most delightful thing I've seen in years. That was wonderful. I, mean, uh, I fell I in love with that little fellow. what your age is, you, you have to enjoy that movie. You know? I wanted to take him home with me. Yeah. Not E.T. Spielberg. I mean, not E.T. <laughs> <laughs> 1941 was one of the things that Spielberg liked oh, to well, forget we're not, about. We're not here to mention the negative part of <laughs> anyone's <laughs> career. No. But uh, getting back to what, what I think, I, I really don't... It was a, a, a terrible accident, of course. But I think uh, the film will stand on its own merit. And if it's a good film, I think it will, will do well. I think people have interest to, to see it. What do you play in this, Abby? Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of am not at liberty to say what I play because it's true. If, you, if you've ever known anyone that's done a, a Spielberg, they're, they're um, oh, I really see. a little secretive about what in this type, a particular type of film. Did you have any scenes? But I don't sing. With Vic Morrow? Did you have any scenes? No, I, I, he, uh, the, the picture isn't in segments. And that was a different segment. Oh, I'm I doing see. an entirely different segment of the film. But it's a very interesting role. It's it's more of an offbeat role, not in my mind, but in the minds of the public, probably. But I, I'm delighted. Couldn't be more delighted than That's to. That's a very provocative answer. I must Isn't say. it though? Uh, but well, you know what? You play an a cabbage or what? <laughs> yes, I, I play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> An artichoke. <laughs> You'll recognize me. That is a me. provocative answer, and people will... That's the kind of an answer that will bring more people to the box office than... Uh, well, I'm, I'm being truthful. I'm not trying to, to hype the film. It doesn't need any hyping. Uh, but you're not telling thing. us what you play, I'm not which telling is part you of the game, huh? Because... <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> because I really want to do the role. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying it because say, I do feel that... The picture's finished, isn't it? No, no. I'm, I start work uh, tomorrow. But they said the scene. Going to sleep. <laughs> but they told me the scene in which the accident occurred was the very last scene. The, in the as movie. I said, it's four segments. The oh, film is divided into segments. Uh -huh. So that that segment is was done. Uh -huh. That the segment is over. But um, if if you know, I really feel that once the publicity department starts to release things, then everyone will feel a little bit freer. But now, I don't want to be the one that said, "Hey, you know, it's all about mm -hmm. this." Mm -hmm. Let me talk about the Abbey Lane that everyone's used to seeing on the stage in Las Vegas. That I can talk about. <laughs> and since Vegas is a, is a whole other picture, I mean, a lot of major stars who were appearing in Vegas are no longer appearing in Vegas because of this economy and all. Mm -hmm. well, and I, I was stunned to see Joan Rivers, the Smothers Brothers, and Jim Stafford all on the same bill. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, well, you know the past wrong, several years, it's been two he headliners, you know, co-starring. Uh, I'm, there's no wood, wood here, so I would knock on it, but I was very fortunate this, this past year. I played there uh, 10 weeks, uh, which is a lot, considering the economic situation that's mm. hit Vegas so badly. Um, I think it's going to get better. I'm sure it's going to get better when things turn around generally. But they say in Atlantic City, you'd never Atlantic know. You'd never know that the well. economy was slow. Uh, well, you know, Atlantic City, City is easier to get to. And people, a lot and of people. And there are a lot of folks in that bus, area too. A lot of folks in that <laughs> area, and instead of going to Vegas, bec uh, now transportation is more expensive. They go for the gambling. Uh, as a performer, I would like to think that 
they're coming there to see the entertainer. They fill the room, but I think it's an afterthought. Mm -hmm. they, they really are coming to gamble. Aren't they kind of responsible for it, the people who run those hotels? Remember years ago, it used to be, it used to be in Vegas that if you would check in and uh, they know you were going to lose whatever you could afford, and they know what you what you can afford when you check in. They know they, they know the whole full rundown on you, what you've got in the bank. <laughs> Trust me, they know all that. And they would make it very comfortable. If you if you if you went Tap City, they'd pick up the bill and I think they still do that with very high happy. rollers. They do that with very high rollers. I had a conflict to date with the film The uh, Twilight Zone, and I had to get out of Atlantic City. And the thing that bothered the hotel, and they were very kind to release me and give me another date, the Sands in Atlantic City, was um, they had sent out invitations. My appearance was going to be for high rollers. It seems that there are certain artists they feel attract yeah, to high honor. rollers. I beg your pardon? There are a lot there of are. artists who, the Paul Hank is another one, mm -hmm. yes, Sinatra, Sinatra and all those people. Shecky Green, people like that. Are they more responsive as an audience than No, the I, I actually, uh, they're, it's, they, they comp the high rollers. So it's all complimentary. They, they don't yeah, charge them for the rooms. So at all. They're not more responsive, actually. They sometimes reserve booths for high rollers, and they don't show up because they're playing. Oh, okay. And no one's going to drag them away from the table and say, you better get in there and see the show. Au contraire. <laughs> but um, getting back to what you mentioned about uh, whose fault is it, I have to honestly say I think it's a combination of um, management and the artists. I think the, the artists, artists have overpriced themselves. Have overpriced themselves and the uh, the hotels it it used to be the best the the biggest bargain in the world to go to las vegas and spend yeah. a weekend transportation is now expensive mm -hmm. uh the hotel rooms went up food and the uh, the minimum charge in the hotels to see a show it got outrageous and uh, the psychological i couldn't understand the raison d'etre for this because you're not going to make your money by the amount of bodies you have in a nightclub in the showroom, of not. you're going to make it by the amount of people you have in the hotel out gambling. So it used to be you could go in there very reasonably and see uh, two shows a night and still have the money to gamble. Then it got to be, well, people say, I'd hear them at the pool and they wouldn't recognize me. They say, well, what are we going to see tonight? Well, we can see one show, and so then we get... They were, you know, sure. counting out their sure. money. Then all of a sudden, salaries went to three fifty a week, three seventy five a week for an artist. Thousand. Three hundred seventy five thousand. <coughs> takes yes. you and, well, <laughs> takes us two or three weeks to I do. I have to work two or three <laughs> weeks to get that. Did I'm done. No, I I kind of um, I'm I'm level he headed, so I and also no one offered me that money. <laughs> That's the only place. No, I just uh, kept my my price affordable, and so I played more. It's wonderful. Thank you, Abby, for being with us. Thank, thank you for you, having Meredith me here. Baxter I enjoyed Bernie. it. Thank you. Continued success to both of you. We're coming right back with Sandy Kenyon and the Entertainment News.